The story of David and Goliath remains very relatable because it is about the battles that we face in everyday life. David a mere shepherd boy was sent to the front lines to carry food for his brothers. This is because Goliath had been taunting the people of Israel for 40 days. And because of Goliath's harsh language as well as his imposing frame, the Israelites literally ran from him. David the young shepherd boy heard the challenge which was about sending someone to fight Goliath. Do you know the interesting thing about this? No one volunteered to fight Goliath except David. Not even David's brothers who were in the army. Only David volunteered to fight the uncircumcised Philistine called Goliath. So King Saul reluctantly agreed and offered David his armor. But here is what I want you to take note. Never trade faith for Saul's armor. Don't do it. Never trade your faith in God for Saul's armor. 1 Samuel 17 verse 38 to 40 says, Then Saul gave David his own armor, a bronze helmet, and a coat of mail. David put it on and strapped the sword over it. He took a step to see what it was like for he had never worn such things before. Then David said, I can't go in these. He protested to Saul, I'm not used to them. So David took them off again. He picked up five smooth stones from a stream and put them into his shepherd's bag. Then, armed only with his shepherd's staff and sling, he started across the valley to fight the Philistine. David was trusting God to protect him in his fight against Goliath. Yes, he trusted God. Our battles can be enormous like Goliath, but God wants us to totally rely on him without our armor of self-reliance. There are some people who would convince you it is fine and good for you to trust God. But to take the next step of faith you must do something in addition to faith in God to ensure victory. Saul had fought in battles so many times and his armor had served him well. He wouldn't go into battle without it and figured David shouldn't either. Yet David wouldn't wear the armor into battle because he himself had not proven it. It was foreign to his experience. God had never needed the assistance of sword and armor before to give him victory. Had God's ability to save been reduced by the size of David's opponent? The answer is no because if the battle is the Lord's, then the victory is the Lord's also. Yes, the battle belongs to the Lord. God's got this. King Saul ended up dying years later in a battle at his own hand and sword wearing his armor. This was hung as a trophy in an idol's temple. Can you imagine that? So, never allow someone else's lack of faith dictate your decisions. We serve a God who is able to accomplish what concerns us in every aspect. Saul's armor can take many forms and can be forced upon us by people who mean well. They have always relied on their armor, their experience, training, education, their natural talents, degrees, their cultural study, their money and contacts, organizations and on. This is because they have attributed victory to their armor and God has not received the glory. They are happy to say, go and God be with you, but you'll need this, when God has said otherwise. After David accepted Goliath's challenge, King Saul tried to make him look and act like a soldier. He tried to dress him in armor and give him a sword and shield. But David was a mere boy, a young shepherd. The sword was too big. The armor was too heavy. David could not even walk in this stuff let alone fight in it. David put on the weighty equipment but quickly concluded he could not fight in this heavy armor. Saul offered his own armor to David. This was quite an honor, but there was a major problem. David was only a teenage boy, and King Saul was a tall, impressive physical specimen. Simply put, Saul's armor didn't fit David. It probably looked like a toddler trying to wear his dad's shirt. Even if it fit, David had never worn armor before. He wasn't a soldier. He was a simple shepherd boy. David opted to use the humble weaponry of a shepherd, a staff and a sling. We know what happened from there. God gave David a glorious victory. Why am I talking about Saul's armor? It is because we have a tendency to compare our talents with the talents of others. Sometimes we obsess over the things we can't do instead of improving on the things we can do. It's as though we are saying, God you made a mistake when you created me, you gave me the wrong talents. This kind of attitude does not glorify God. God equips each of us in such a way that is unique to our strengths and abilities. David was trained as a shepherd to use another weapon. For David, it was a slingshot. David showed great maturity in realizing he could not be effective with Saul's armor. What are the gifts and talents God has given to you? 
Have you ever tried to accomplish a task with tools you were not trained to use? God allows each of us to develop skills that are unique to our life. He will not call you to use someone else's tools. Saul's armor was made to fit him, not David. You must wear your own armor, and not armor made for someone else. You have your own personality and God has created you to serve him in a unique way. You weren't designed by God to be me or another sister or brother in Christ. You are you and God created you for a special purpose that only you can carry out. It's time to start being content with who you are and stop comparing yourself to other people. Now you have to understand. They tried to give David Saul's armor. David put it on but it didn't fit. You can't fight your Goliath being somebody else. You have to fight your Goliath as yourself because it was you that God brought to the place. Don't show up as a stranger. David was given all of the things that a soldier needed to defeat Goliath. But David wasn't a soldier. He was a shepherd. He didn't fit into soldiers' clothing. They simply weren't who he was. He was a shepherd and if he was going to win the battle, it would have to be as a shepherd. David wore what fit him and he succeeded. If we want to fulfill God's purpose for our lives, then we should wear the clothes that God provides for us. We should be the people whom God had called us to be. Put on your God-given size of shoe. Who am I talking to? Don't show up as anybody else. It's you that God blessed. It's you that God called. It's you that God anointed. It's you that God set aside. It's you that God prepared for such a moment as this. Show up as yourself. And he shook off Saul's armor. And he said, I can't fight in your armor. David knew how to fight with rocks, but he didn't know anything about shields. He didn't know anything about swords and he didn't know anything about horses. All he knew how to fight with was rocks. But whatever you're good at, God will use something you got. God will use something that you're used to. God will use something that you're familiar with. And David. There David was. The would-be king of Israel is down in the riverbed like a child looking amongst the crawdads, picking out rocks. I want that one. No, that one's too rough. I want that one right here and that one. That one right there. And he made a weapon. It wasn't even a slingshot. It was a shepherd's bag turned into a slingshot. It was a bag. It was a rag and a rock. And he ran down on that field and said what did you say? He ran down on that field. And the dichotomy was so strong that Goliath snickered. He laughed and said that all you got to send against me today. That little boy with that rag. And that rock. That's supposed to go kill me. What am I? Am I a dog that you send this kid down here to kill me? Lo and behold he was defeated. It is critical that we understand David's primary motivation here. David's motivation is neither malice nor pride. David is not attempting to boost his self-esteem by overcoming a giant in battle. David's singular concern is for the reputation of his God. We have much to learn from David. We have much to learn from his battle against Goliath. We have learned that we must make God's honor the goal of everything we do. We have learned that we must not look at the obstacle but at our Redeemer. We have learned that the only armor that matters is God's armor. He must be our strength and shield. If he is, then there is no obstacle too big for us to overcome. And we will overcome if our goal is the glory of God. Friends, make this your goal for Jesus' sake. Amen.